morning and welcome to Coffee Talk. This Coffee Talk is probably going to be one of my favorites. I get so many um, emails from people asking advice. And what I see, what the theme of all of this is, that we collectively have lost faith in ourselves. But alas, there's an answer. Faith, people assume faith relates solely to God, but that isn't true. Faith is believing wholeheartedly in something, starting with yourself. You must believe in yourself before you could even believe that there's a higher power. God has nothing to do with this coffee talk. I want to explain fear. Fear is what stops us from having faith in ourselves. I know because I battle it all the time. But we are perceiving fear the wrong way. We look at fear as a negative thing. But fear's first job is to protect us. Fear's first job is to keep us alive, literally. So when we walk to the edge and look over, it is fear that stops us from taking that next step. Fear knows what we have done in the past. It knows what has kept us alive. So fear is going to encourage us to stay in our safety zone. Fear is not our enemy. Fear is an instinctual tool that we have been given as human beings to keep us alive. For example, the elevator door opens, right? There's a strange man standing inside the elevator. We feel fear. Our adrenaline starts to pump. Our body is telling us this is dangerous. Be, be, statistically, all the times you did not get on the elevator kept you alive. So what I'm going to need you to do is not get on the elevator. That is fear taking control and keeping you alive. Fear also works with decisions that we want to make. When we think about making decisions, fear is like, Think of it like almost scientifically. It calculates decisions we've made in the past. It calculates feelings that we've had, reactions to things. And it, it comes in stronger when it believes that we are going to be too far out of our comfort zone. So fear actually, you know, it cha fear challenges our wants, our needs, but it also challenges our faith in ourselves you know, because it's trying to protect us. So when we say, wait, I think there may be something better for me. Fear goes, you don't need better. Why do you need better? You're safe exactly where you are. In that dead end job, in that unhappy relationship, in the house you don't want to live in, just stay where you are. It's safe there. But then we go, well, I don't know if I want safe anymore. I think I'm ready to move on. And it's now becomes that challenge, that push and pull, fear versus faith. Anytime you try to take an action in your life, fear shows up gallantly with a hat and a sword. That's his job. His job is literally to challenge you to make sure you are doing the right thing. But we perceive fear as a bad thing. Why am I so afraid to do this? Why am I so afraid to do it? That's his job. His job is to make you afraid of change so that you know you are doing the right thing. I'm going to give you an example. Um, this whole thing, as you know, with Jersey Bell has literally got me like pulling my hair out of my head. Because I'm a businesswoman. Because I take risks. Because I am... I, I calculate things. I've been doing this long enough to know that I can make a season two of Jersey Bell successful. I know what the fans want. I know what the fans of season one loved and why they're going to come back. I know what new fans. I mean, I've done all the calculations, right? Bravo and I have had 9 million phone calls about this. I decided I needed to get on the phone with the president of the network. I was terrified. She's a beast in business. She's um, very matter of fact. She's not like mushy, like, hey, love, hey, darling, none of that. Um, she's very to the point and she's no bullshit. So I had built up in my mind, 
how this call could go. She could get on the phone and say, Jamie, what, stop chasing me. If I wanted to renew your show by now, I would have. She could get on the phone and say, who, who, who are you? What is this? I, I mean, there were so many things in my mind, but I was determined to do it anyway. I, I abandoned all protocol. I didn't go through my agents. I didn't go through her assistants. I just literally emailed the president of the network and said, I believe I have a solid case for why Jersey Bell season two should happen. I would like to talk to you about it on the phone. And then I waited. Did I make the right decision? Is, is this going to cause trouble? Am I going to get in trouble for, for doing that? I mean, I, it made me crazy. Then ding, the email comes back. Absolutely would love to talk to you. Okay, but now I got to do it, right? I went through every scenario. Fear tried to talk me out of this call at, at, at every turn. When it was coming down, I was so overprepared. I took notes. I, I practiced my pitch in the kitchen. I paced back and forth in New Jersey. I, you know, and fear tried to talk me out of it. Just email and cancel. Whatever's meant to be will be. Just don't talk to her. But I had to have faith in myself. I didn't get this far in life. I didn't get this far in business by canceling a call like that. That's not who I am. But I was petrified. I felt like I was going to throw up. Literally. Pacing. I was shaking. And when, the call, when I saw the number come through on the caller ID, I was like, holy shit balls. This is it. And I gave it everything that I had on the call. Literally. And, you know, we still don't know. They're, they're deciding, but... My point is that fear tried to protect me. Fear knew it could go very wrong. Fear knew that she could be very angry that I called her, that I reached out to her, that I didn't follow the rules. Fear knew that this could not end well, that she could cancel me right on the phone. I mean, she's the president. But I, ha but I, I had to have faith in myself that I deserve to be heard. I put everything I had into this project. And I deserved to be heard. Okay. Sometimes fear surfaces as self-doubt. What if I'm wrong? What if I speak up and I'm wrong? What if they don't like me anymore? What if worse, they don't love me? The problem becomes when the voice of our fear grows louder than the voice of our faith. Because now fear is in control, right? That's the scary part. Once fear takes control of your life, he stops us from being who we are, or more importantly, who we are meant to be. And then we deal with things like depression and anxiety, overeating, alcohol. These things, we deal with these things when we feel like we can't be who we are or who we're meant to be because of fear. And that's where it really gets dangerous for us as human beings because fear is not a stoplight. But it's also not a green light. Fear is a caution light. It checks in with you. Wait a second. Are we sure we should be doing this? Doesn't mean you shouldn't be doing it. It just wants you to think. Really think. So don't abandon your faith in yourself. Send the email anyway. Make the call if you believe that your faith, if your faith is bigger than your fears, if you believe that the decision you are making is the right move for you, don't allow fear to win. But don't be angry at him that he shows up because that's his job. He's trying to keep you safe. Remember that. Fear doesn't care that you hate your job. Fear doesn't care that you don't like your living situation. Fear doesn't care that you are no longer in love with the person you are with and you are ready to move on. Fear does not care about any of that. Fear wants to keep you safe. It wants to keep you alive. At the root of all of this, fear just wants to keep you alive. So how can you be mad at fear? So how do we have more faith in ourselves? How do we silence the fear and let the faith in ourselves come louder? The first thing we need to do is accept fear. Accept that he's part of us. As much as our capability to love or to parent to walk. He's there for better or for worse. We need to appreciate the fact that faith is there. Know his role. 
and really appreciate the fact that we have something looking out for us all the time. We need to listen to our fears and begin, be able to dis, discern what is real and what is perceived. Is there a monster in the closet? Or have you just conditioned yourself for so long not to open the closet that you believe there's a monster behind every door? What's the worst thing that'll happen if you quit your job? If you make the move? If you break up with the person? If you fill in the blank of whatever you're afraid of? Really listen. What is your fear trying to protect you from? Then look at it like a scientist. Is there really a monster? If I quit my job, will I really lose my house? Will, I, will my marriage fall apart? I mean, really work through what it is fear is trying to caution you about. And then discern whether those things are real or not. Then from there, make a decision. Committed wholeheartedly, two feet in, make the decision. And slowly but surely, we will learn to have more faith in ourselves. Faith will slowly but surely begin to win over fear. It's not going to happen overnight. Fear is powerful. He's been around a long time. Look, I'm afraid every day of 9 million things. I'm afraid of this coffee talk, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and I sometimes I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe my faith is louder than my fear. Um, I love you today. Have a great day.